Hey there guys, it's Mr. Herbst here and today we're going to go ahead and focus on the five major things that contribute to animal learning, otherwise known as the five major things that contribute to that nurture debate. Uh, before we go ahead and, and go any further, I want to kind of make sure we're comfortable with this idea of nature versus nurture. Well, if behaviors are in our nature, they are in our genes and they are what we call innate. That means we really don't have very much to do with them. Um, things that are in our nature to do are very difficult to consciously ignore. They're very hard to ignore. And we find that there are some things called fixed action patterns. And we'll focus on that in a little bit. Now, things that are in our, our nurture are influenced by our environment. That means that they are influenced by the foods that we eat and the people that we grow up with. And they are largely learned. And there are five major ways that they can be learned. And we're going to focus on that in our PowerPoint here. The five major ways that they can be learned are through habituation, imprinting, association, imitation, and problem solving. Now, the first thing is habituation. Now, I know it might be a little bit hard to tell, but take a look over at this uh, picture right here. These two things over here are scarecrows. And look at all these little little funny geese over here. They're not they're they're not scared of that scarecrow at all. Well, that's kind of what habituation is, where eventually being sort of exposed to something for so long, it kind of uh, diminishes its uh, sort of value. So eventually a behavior be, may become diminished due to repeated exper exposures. And so these geese have been exposed to this scarecrow for so long that they actually literally aren't scared of it anymore. And the second way where we can kind of uh, learn behaviors is through imprinting. This is actually really cool, um, but largely imprinting is irreversible. It's pretty hard to reverse. And it's sort of, uh, it happens during an organism's um, lifespan when it's really, really young and it's sort of volatile. It wants to soak up all the information it can. A really good example of imprinting is right here. Where, take a look, that, that these are all like geese, and they're all following around this guy right here. The geese happen to, like, the first, the second that they're hatched, they sort of, uh, most birds, that the second that they're hatched, they sort of associate the first thing that they that they see is that's their mother. And they sort of follow that thing around all the time. So the first thing that these ducks or geese sort of found, saw at first was, was this human being. And that now they follow it around no matter where it goes. It's imprinted in their brain. Just boom, they know to do it all the time. Another really good example of imprinting is within salmon. Now, fish don't take care of their young, but... These salmon were born in a river somewhere in Alaska, and the, the odors, the smell, the, the, the visual things, the association, they actually sort of associate the area with where they were born. So it's imprinted in their brain. So if you know a little bit about salmon, they have to always go back to the same place they were, they were born to spawn. So these salmon here will will climb up waterfalls just to go back to the same place that they were they were born, they were spawned at, in order to make new babies. The third thing, uh, the third way thing that behaviors are learned is through association. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, where things, uh, where animals tend to associate two things, uh, whether that be negative or positive. In this case, we have a whole bunch of ducks. These ducks right here. Are, are, are associating that this human here has food. And so over time, they have sort of associated that humans have food, so let's hang around humans. Let's come up to humans and let's, and let's uh, try to get as much as we can out of humans. And so that's sort of a, a positive sort of uh, association. Well, what about when there's a negative association? Sometimes uh, animals... One of the strongest ways that animals learn is simply by trial and error. And go figure, humans are no different. We learn by trial and error as well. This, well, this poor guy right here, this poor wolf, uh, look at all those little thorns in his face. 
Um, I think he's figured out pretty quick, hey, don't mess with a porcupine. Let's not try to eat a porcupine. And so he figured out pretty quick, you mess with a porcupine, you're going to get some thorns in your face. That is a trial by error, uh, sort of uh, trial and error sort of uh, learn associated behavior. And finally, uh, a, another really cool uh, example of how behaviors are learned is through imitation. And simply, um, imitation is, is kind of like learning from your parents or, or learning from others. And no other example is more cool than dolphins. Dolphins, um, the one at least in Florida, I don't know if this exists anywhere else, but I know this exists in Florida, where dolphins will swim into this circular pattern like this, and they'll, and they'll sort of uh, swim, and they'll kick up the dirt on the bottom of the ocean. And that dirt will sort of create like this cloud or this ring of, 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 of dirty water. And all the fish that are in here will try to jump off to over that, uh, they, they perceive it as being a wall, but it's actually just, you know, dirty water. But it look, to them, it looks like a wall. So they're trying to jump over it. And guess what? On the other side of that little ring, that's right, they're sitting the little dolphins. The dolphins are sitting there with their mouths open, trying to catch as many fish as they can. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. So, um, what we find is that not all dolphins do this, and so it must we we must uh, logically think that it must have been learned and sort of passed down from parents to offspring, and it most likely is because only in small pockets of the world do we actually see that dolphins do this. So it's sort of more or less been taught to their offspring. Again, dolphins are extremely smart organisms. And finally, the last thing, uh, that an the last way that animals sort of learn is through problem solving. Problem solving is simply where organisms can, can kind of solve problems and learn um, by thinking. It's absolutely amazing. These chimpanzees here uh, we may know that chimpanzees uh, can use tools, right? This this chimpanzee here is using a stick to kind of get something out of the water, but not all, you don't necessarily have to just be a mammal or something that is similar to a human being to kind of problem solve. This here is a raven. Ravens are absolutely amazing. Ravens will will figure out that they have some sort of uh, nut or, or really a nut with a really hard shell and they'll drop them on the road it's absolutely cool and they'll drop them on the street purposely so that cars run them over and when the cars run them over you know it squishes the nut opens it up and now the raven can go ahead and eat the nut inside and you know what's even more amazing is that ravens have actually figured out that hey i don't want to go ahead and drop the nut uh, in an area where there's tons of cars moving all the time, I want to do it at a crosswalk. And that's and ravens actually drop their nuts at crosswalks, and so that they know there's this actually planned time when all the cars are going to stop, and I can go ahead and suck up or, 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 or harvest the nut that the cars just ran over. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, learned a little bit more about how kind of... Uh, animal behaviors are learned, make sure that you complete the Google form below in the description. Anyway, I'm signing off, folks. Y'all have a nice day.